My name is Paul. I am a third year undergraduate nursing student here at UNB and I welcome all of you who have recently came to Canada or about to come to Canada and today we're going to talk about Medicare and healthcare system in Canada and specifically in New Brunswick. So uh, we together with my peer Hatvi we did this presentation at Multicultural uh, Association of Fredericton last uh, fall and uh, we found that many people are not completely aware of s different parts of healthcare system and where to seek help especially in Fredericton and surrounding area so today we're going to work about how healthcare system in Canada works in generally and where you can have some medical help and assistance in Fredericton and surrounding area so uh, healthcare system in Canada is uh, generally free for people who have Medicare card or Medicare insurance. So you can ask me, what is Medicare? And Medicare is provided by the government to all Canadian citizens, permanent residents and full-time international students and the ones who have work permit. It covers things like doctor's visits, medical tests, and hospitalizations. In addition to Medicare, many Canadians buy additional health insurance, which covers prescription drugs, eye exams, and dental work. Some of these things are Medicare does not cover completely everything, and we're going to talk about it in a little while. So without insurance, these things can get very costly in Canada. And without Medicare, all healthcare services, you will have to pay for them. So to be eligible for Medicare, uh, you have to be either a Canadian citizen uh, or the person who has a permanent resident of Canada or who has a work permit or student open student visa. The uh, individuals who are not eligible for Medicare are regular members of Canadian Armed Forces, uh, the ones who have tourist or visitor visa, uh, the uh, individuals who chose Canada as their transit country on their journey to any other state, and um, students from another provinces. So when I say students from another provinces, we're speaking about New Brunswick Medicare only. We're not speaking about Medicare in all Canada. And also inmates of federal penalty, uh, penitentiaries are not eligible for Medicare. Uh, there are two ways to apply for a Medicare card. You can apply either in person at the Service New Brunswick at any Service New Brunswick office in the province of New Brunswick or in line at Government New Brunswick uh, website. So how to apply for, New Brun uh, apply for Medicare in person? Uh, in Fredericton, you would go to the Service New Brunswick at the downtown Fredericton, which is in 432 Queen Street. Uh, with your, well, you will have a Medicare application form and you would be able to fill it either with assistance and translation services or by yourself. Uh, to apply for Medicare card, uh, you will require also a certain amount of documents to bring with you, and we're going to talk about it in a little while. Uh, once you also then, after you filled out this uh, application form for Medicare card, you submit it to the Service New Brunswick, and then you would have to wait for approximately four to six weeks for your Medicare come to, card to come to your mail at your house. Uh, the wait time will usually vary, and it can take up to 12 weeks or eight weeks because all Medicare cards are being created physically only in Ontario. So for all provinces, there is only one factory that does all the Medicare cards. That's why the time, change, the time when you will receive it may vary. But the important thing to point out, by the time you apply, the moment you hang in the filled uh, document for your New Brunswick Medicare application, you are automatically already covered by Medicare services. And you can receive uh, free healthcare services that, co that are covered by New Brunswick Medicare. So that's another thing that you do not have to worry by the time. The moment you can step out of the service New Brunswick, you can get into a car accident and you don't have to worry about paying those huge $20,000 bills. So uh, you can also apply for New Brunswick Medicare online. And there are certain parameters on how, uh, if you're eligible to apply for New Brunswick Medicare online. And you can do that if you're applying for Medicare coverage for the first time in your life or your Medicare card has been expired for more than two years. Uh, you 
can also apply if you're returning to New Brunswick after taking up residence in another Canada, Canadian province or territory or, or even different country. Uh, however, you cannot apply online if you're renewing your Medicare coverage. You are making changes to your existing Medicare coverage if you're, for example, moving to another apartment or another house and you need to change the address on your Medicare. You cannot do this online. You have to physically present in the office or you are moving to another province and you need to change your Medicare or, for example, from New Brunswick Medicare to Nova Scotia Medicare. You also have to do this in person. So. To apply for um, online Medicare, you need to scan all of the required documents for application process. That is another thing to remember and to, to keep in mind for, for the application. And speaking of documents, uh, you need to have uh, three types of different documents. And one of them would be if you're a Canadian, you need to have a passport of Canada or a permanent resident card. If not, you need to have the passport of your country of origin. Uh, you need, and then you need to have another uh, proof of identity, either your uh, driver's license or your identification card or anything that is considered to be a legal government issued document with a photo of yourself. And then you need to have uh, one document that will support uh, your uh, place of residence in New Brunswick. Sometimes uh, uh, office workers of government of New Brunswick that work in the office would require two documents that uh, prove your residency in New Brunswick. So just to keep in mind, uh, there are they're not always must be a legal document of that. So it could be either a bill from your electricity or your water, or it could be, again, it could be your New Brunswick driver's license, or it could be a void check from your bank account. So, whew, <laughs> sorry, uh, just try to bring as much documents from this list as possible to be on the safe side. Uh, another thing that I have to point out is government of New Brunswick uh, cannot accept social insurance numbers as a legal document that, support, uh, that uh, proves your identity. They are not allowed to touch this kind of document. I don't know why, honestly, but they just uh, consider it not to be your choice uh, to, to bring to the office, right? So. Um, and now let's talk about what does the New Brunswick Medicare cover within the province. So uh, New Brunswick Medicare basically covers all care services provided in the hospital and in the clinicals that are under Horizon Health Networks uh, company, which is the healthcare company that provides healthcare services in an English language. And in the northern parts of New Brunswick that speaks primarily French, there is another company called Vitalité that provides the same thing, but only in different language. Um, well, New Brunswick Medicare uh, coverage includes standard hospitalization accommodations and meals, any necessary nursing and physician service and care, um, any medications that you will receive while you are being in the hospital, you don't have to pay for it. It's all covered by New Brunswick Medicare. And moreover, 75% of the price that of, the, of uh, drugs that are being prescribed to you is will be also covered by Medicare. So uh, the price that you're going to pay at the pharmacy, it is already deducted with the overall price for the medication. For example, I can bring you the price for insulin, which in Canada, Mm, for for the information of fall 2023, it was $8 per 100 unit vial. In the United States, for the same vial, without the medication, you would have to, without the Medicare, you would have to pay at least 50 to $75. So the, the price difference is very, very crucial. 
Um, what else does New Brunswick Medicare cover? So it covers any operating room, delivery room, or any static facilities. You don't have to pay anything for delivery, uh, for delivering your baby in New Brunswick or in Canada if you have Medicare card. Uh, Medicare covers or laboratory, x-ray, diagnostic imaging, and diagnostic services uh, if they are decided to be necessary by your physician. So therapies such as physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech language pathology therapy, and audiology, uh, radiotherapy, and routine surgical supplies are also covered in the Medicare, by the Medicare. Uh, so we have a un basic understanding what is covered by Medicare. Now let's talk about what is not concluded, uh, um, included to the Medicare coverage. So the biggest thing uh, to think about of what is not covered by Medicare is services of ambulances. So uh, usually the problem is, is the ambulance services of New Brunswick is not the same company as the Horizon Health Network. And for all ambulance services and transfers, you will have to pay. But the very, very big thing to, uh, to keep in mind is the price for the ambulance will vary on case by case scenario. So, for example, if it was a false call for 911 and by the time ambulance has arrived there hasn't been any medical emergency that would require the ambulance to rapidly transfer you from your place where you called it to the hospital and seen by a doctor you will have to pay for full price for the transfer while on the other case if anybody was walking on the street and they saw a motor vehicle accident or a car crashed and they called an ambulance, uh, chances are high uh, the people who would be transferred to the hospital by ambulance wouldn't have to pay at all. And uh, another thing to keep in mind, especially for the newcomers and the uh, clients of, of MCAF or Multicultural Association of Fredericton, uh, those people are considered to be a vulnerable population. And uh, usually the healthcare team would include the social service worker who would find ways to decrease the price for the ambulance services and non-Medicare covered services for those people to as low as minimum as possible. So, okay. Uh, Another things that are not covered by Medicare are medications used outside of hospital. So any prescription medications that are being prescribed to your by your doctor for you if you are not admitted to the hospital, you will have to pay for it. But as I mentioned before, the price would not be as huge as for example, it would be from the parts of the or the world where you're coming from. Uh, private and non-prescribed care procedures are also not covered by Medicare. So any massage therapy, Reiki, or anything like that, you will have to pay for it for the professional who is performing those things for you. Uh, most dental and vision-related issues, unless in special situations where it is a medical emergency and, for example, something sharp has stuck into your eye, it is considered a medical emergency and Medicare would cover it. If it is not a medical emergency and, for example, a routine checkup with a dentist or optometrist or ophthalmologist, you will have to pay for this visit as the same uh, and for the same things for any interventions those professionals will do for you. For example, cavity change or changing your braces with an orthodontist, you will have to pay for it. And uh, the same thing goes with the prescription glasses. And they can get very, very expensive. And as I have mentioned in the very beginning of our presentations, many Canadians uh, choose to buy uh, additional insurance or this additional insurance is being provided by their employer in the, pl in the company or in the place they are working. For example, if I would be working as a nurse at the hospital, Horizon Health Network would provide me a package of benefits and one of these benefits will be included a Blue Cross insurance. And this insurance would partially cover all those expenses on the 
interventions or prescription glasses, uh, visits with dentists, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that are not covered by Medicare. And it is a really, really nice thing to have. And it is for you also to be aware of. If you're working for a big company or for any employer, just have a chat with them and ask if you have any benefits such as Blue Cross insurance. Now, let's talk about emergencies. <laughs> there are many medical emergencies. For example, if any of your family members, your mother, father, sister, brother, has a chest pain or difficulties breathing or having signs of severe allergic reaction, do not hesitate and go to the emergency department or call the ambulance. It is the biggest, it is the smallest expense that you can do towards your health rather than waiting for the disease to progress to that extent that you will always have to buy something medically related. Your health is not the thing to, to, to not to waste money on. You just need to 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 always take care of yourself. Uh, the problem of emergency services in New Brunswick, unfortunately, is very, very, very sad <laughs> as we are lacking primary health providers and especially emergency physicians. The wait times are much, much higher compared with other provinces in Canada and people who are experiencing and presenting with such a medically emergent uh, signs and symptoms could wait for hours without being seen by a primary health provider. And that's a problem we're going to talk about. And hopefully I will show you other ways to find healthcare assist, uh, services without waiting for 10 hours in the emergency department and to hear that you need to go home and take some Tylenol. <laughs> so, if, as I mentioned before, if you or someone in your care uh, has an urgent medical condition or is experiencing a health crisis, either travel, uh, accompany them to the emergency department or call 911. <sighs> However, if you don't really know if it is the right uh, time to, to go to the emergency or the uh, healthcare problems that, you're, that you or someone you love or part of your family or your friend uh, is not as urgent, you can always call 811, which is called telecare services. And we're going to talk about it in a minute. So I'm going to quickly explain what is the process of being admitted to the emergency department in Fredericton and in Canada in general. So the rules are universal and standard to every emergency department in every hospital of this country. Uh, emergency department does not work on regular queue or regular line basis. So it's not like first come, first serve. Every person who crosses the doors of the emergency department of every hospital is will be assessed first by a registered nurse and it is called medical triaging. And on the bottom of the slide, you could see five different levels of medical triaging, with the level one being very severe, imminent, most major trauma that would is life threatening condition. And with this condition, the person needs to be seen within first five minutes after being admitted to the emergency department. And with other levels, the time when you will be seen by a by healthcare provider or a doctor or a nurse practitioner will expand arithmetically. So with level two, it is still emergent. It is chest pain. We don't know either it could be uh, embolism in your lungs or it could be heart attack or it could be stroke. We don't know. We need to run tests, but it's not as emergent. So a person would wait not five minutes, but it has to wait ideally 15 minutes. And with level three, it could wait from 30 minutes to an hour. And uh, unfortunately, what I see and what many healthcare providers and specialists see today is people with level two and level three, instead of waiting for 15 to 30 minutes, have to spend at least two hours to be seen by a doctor. And sometimes 
when your child has a temperature and a fever, you would be assigned level four or level five, and you would you would be told to go home after waiting for eight hours. So emergency department is not usually, is not always the best place to seek non-urgent uh, medical assistance. That is why hence it is called emergency department. <laughs> uh, so speaking of where can I ask for guidance for some help if I don't know or if I'm never if I'm not aware, what should I do or where should I go? You can always call 811, which is a telecare. Telecare is a free confidential health advice and information line. You can dial 811 without any cost for your telephone provider, and they uh, the care is provided by bilingual registered nurses 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. If your child has a temperature and it doesn't go off with help of Tylenol and ibuprofen, and you don't know what to do, you can always call 811. If your prescription medications that you brought from your country of origin are about to expire and you don't know where to get the new prescription, call 811. It is a very, very nice way to ask for help. And telecare services can provide assistance in 82 different languages. Uh, they have adopted, as every healthcare facility in Canada and New Brunswick, have adopted a language line. It is a involvement of third person who would be able to translate to you everything that the healthcare provider or healthcare professional is going to explain to you in your own language. So, for example, you came let's say from ukraine i'm from ukraine <laughs> and the registered you want to have a you want to ask the registered nurse where can i uh, refill my uh, insulin or my heart medications but your level of english proficiency is not to that point that you would be able to understand everything that the registered nurse is going to tell you you can always ask for translation services in every healthcare facility within every government help either it is government of new brunswick as uh, office or police department or hospital or any medical clinic you can always ask for a translator and we it is mandatory for us we're obliged to provide you with this translation services for you to understand everything we're going to talk about and telecare is uh, one of these institutions that has completely adopted this language line so now from uh, having this basis of information, let's uh, go through different geographical and physical places where you can ask for help for healthcare services within the Fredericton and surrounding area. So the biggest and the only hospital we have in Fredericton, it looks like a huge Lego brick. You are not going to miss it. It's located in the uptown Fredericton and it's called Dr. Everett Chalmers Regional Hospital. It works 24 hours a day and all if you're going to call an ambulance, the um, chances are high you're going to go to DEC. So all surgeries are performed at DEC. All diagnostic tests are run at DEC. All specialists, you can see most of the specialists, unless you go to their office, they are located at Dr. Evers Chalmers Hospital. And we have the biggest emergency department, so you can always come there and ask for help if it is considered to be a medical emergency. Uh, for those who have a vehicle and who can travel to a little a uh, town that is located in 16 kilometers from Fredericton. It's called Oromocto. There is a small rural hospital called Oromocto Public Hospital. Uh, it is located um, on 103 Manabago Street. It's uh, 16 kilometers from Fredericton. And they have much a smaller emergency department, but still an emergency department that works every day from 8 to 4. And it provides also the same healthcare services at DEC. However, patients with severe diagnosis or severe conditions will be sent to Fredericton because Fredericton has much bigger and much more opportunities than OPH. Um, the 
time when you're going to wait to see a doctor is generally much, much smaller than you would spend sitting in the DAC ER, right? So if, uh, for example, you can wait there for two hours and will, you will be seen by a doctor, but at the same time, if you would spend four hours in the emergency department at Fredericton, you would just be ambulated by, by the nurses and only nurses would, would see and check up on you and how you're doing. So for those who have um, access to the vehicles, it is a really nice way to get healthcare services a little bit, little bit faster. And you can also travel there by car, oh, uh, pardon me, by cab or by taxi. But the price would be very expensive. It would be only, I think, $70 one way. So spending $140 on just traveling to hospital is not the best thing to do. Uh, a, for people who have non-urgent problems or who would like to be seen by a nurse practitioner or a doctor, there is also an opportunity to book an appointment at downtown community health center of fredericton and that's the place i work and you will have a chance to see me there uh it is located at 339 king street and it works from monday to friday uh from eight to from eight to from eight in the morning till eight in the evening from monday to thursday and on friday from 8 30 to 6 30. and it works as an appointment only clinic so you cannot show up there and present yourself physically and ask, I would like an appointment. You can only book an appointment by calling 506-452-5689. And usually uh, the telephone line would be open at 8.30. That's when the person who, two people who are responsible for operating this line would come to their workplace. And my biggest advice for you, try to call them as early as possible. So if they're open at 8.30, try to start calling them at 8.35. Because throughout the day, the amount of calls that FDCHC or Downtown Community Health Center receives is huge. It's one time I saw there and they've been having 23 people waiting for their call to be answered by only two workers. And you can spend hours on the line waiting for your call to be answered. So the best place, the best thing to do is to call in the very morning. So uh, if you're lucky enough, appointments could be made on the same day as you call. But usually we see people coming two to three days after they had a call and book their appointment. You can book as close as possible and is as in advance as possible. So for example, if you want to renew the prescription for your medications that you had in your country of origin, but you still have like uh, your meds for the coming two weeks, you can book an appointment in a week and a half or in two weeks. And by the time you would be seen by a nurse practitioner, you will, you will be ready for this refill of your prescription medications. And other clinics and after walk-in clinics and after our clinics where you can see non-urgent care are uh, uh, we have two walk-in clinics and one clinic located on the north side and i don't know why it's not added to my presentation but sorry uh, so there are two walk-in clinics in fredericton and one of them is new maryland after hours medical clinic on the south side and a second one is marysville walk-in clinic on the north side uh, they also wa work as an appointment only clinics where you can book an appointment with calling them on their telephone numbers. Uh, usually the same advice as uh, we had with Fredericton Downtown Community Health Clinic, try to call in the very morning. It is the best way and the easiest way to, to, to book an appointment. There is also a walk-in clinic located in the north side uh, uh, Northside Mall, and it's called the Fredericton Urgent Clinic. And compared with uh, Dr. Everest Chalmers E at ED, where everybody's assigned their uh, level within the time frame when they will be seen, with the Fredericton Urgent Clinic, you it works on the first come, first serve basis. So you would stand in line and you would wait to be seen by the family doctor. 
and uh, it works on Mondays and Wednesdays in the north side uh, uh, in the north side uh, mall. So you have you can travel there by 16 bus, and I think it's called uh, not the Beaverbrook Mall, but yeah, it, it is located on the north side of of the city of Fredericton. Brookside Mall. Brookside Mall. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, you can always, and that is being forgotten by, and not everybody knows of that, especially with the newcomer and new settlers populations of Fredericton. You can always ask for your pharmacist for help at any pharmacies at any supermarket. Pharmacists can help you with replacing, extending, or renewing your prescriptions. Pharmacists in Canada are considered to be an authorized prescribers of medications. They can prescribe uh, a, a very wide variety of different meds. So, for example, uh, if your child has a cough that doesn't go off with Tylenol and ibuprofen, you can come to your pharmacist, you can explain what symptoms your child or your loved one is experiencing, and your pharmacist can prescribe you even antibiotics based on your clinical manifestation. So pharmacists can do prescriptions for non-urgent medical conditions, such as minor headaches, flu symptoms, and complicated urinary tract infections, minor muscle or joint pains, or cold sores. Pharmacists can also give you a huge advice on buying over-the-counter medications. And over-the-counter medications are this type of medications that you do not need prescription to buy. For example, um, the same Tylenol or uh, acetaminophen or paracetamol or ibuprofen or um, gravel for nausea. There are many, many different drugs. People, uh, especially newcoming settlers in Canada or newcomers or refugees, uh, in every country, there is a little bit, uh, there is a slightly different name for every medication and people can get lost for trying to find the medication for upset stomach and they cannot find the, this certain type of med that they used to take and buy in their country and now they are very scared of what's going to happen with them. They're going to experience constant heartburns and they don't know what to do. You can always ask pharmacists for help and they are really, really nice people who can also uh, use the running line and teleservices and translate to many different languages of the world. If you would, you can also always apply for receiving your family doctor or your nurse practitioner. So usually for people who have a family doctor or family nurse practitioner they are the first healthcare provider who can offer you and help with the treatment that and find the best option for you unfortunately we are tremendously lacking uh, family doctors and nurse practitioners in the country and uh, in the country in general and especially in our province and uh, for the population of I think 700,000 people that reside in New Brunswick. We only have 400 family doctors and nurse practitioners. And because of that, 40% of population does not have a primary health provider or their family doctor. But you can always apply for one. For applying for family doctor, you can also call either telecare and they will apply help you with application process. So they will apply for you. You just call them. I, you say, I would like to uh, I would like to have a family doctor. They would give they would take all of your confidential information like your name, your Medicare, and basically your street address and amount of your family members or if you have any health conditions and they would put you in the system for getting a family doctor. You can also do this and you can fill a form online on uh, the website called Patient Connect New Brunswick, uh, the government of New Brunswick website. And the process is also very variable. So, for example, if you are a healthy adult who is very young, 
you don't have any family members with the healthcare conditions or past medical history of any chronic conditions or life-threatening conditions like cancer, you would have to wait for uh, quite a while. And by saying quite a while, I mean, unfortunately, from five to seven years. However, on the contrary, if uh, you uh, have a big family and for example you have grandparents and one of your grandparents have diabetes another grandparent has heart conditions you have you have a disorder either your you have many children or one of your children also has a medical disorder you would be able to have a family doctor much much faster and we're talking not only years but we can talk months so i had had a chance to help a family, Ukrainian refugees, last fall, and all of their family members had some problems with uh, with their health, and they applied for family doctors. They received one in two weeks. So it is very again everything is case by case scenario, and your family history is going to be and your history and the amount of your family members is going to be crucial in determining when you will be able to have a family doctor and you can always another thing and a very easy and good thing to uh, receive non-urgent uh, health care and ask a nurse practitioner or a doctor uh, about your health condition is through e-visit new brunswick or uh, by uploading a, an app on your de smart device, which is called Maple. And with this app or with this website, e Visit New Brunswick, you can apply for an online appointment with a nurse practitioner who works from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening every day every uh, every holiday 365 days a year and it is a really really nice option for the people who are still not very aware with the Fredericton who whose level of English proficiency is not to that point they can freely communicate with the healthcare providers and who ask for a translation or who is just easier to, to get along with electronic devices and uh, internet, you can always ask for, for an appointment with a nurse practitioner and e-visit New Brunswick. Again, the time frames when you will be able to receive the healthcare system, will uh, healthcare services will vary, and it can take from days, hours to two weeks. Usually, what we have been seeing for the last couple of months, the and from what I hear here personally from my friends and my colleagues, uh, is that uh, people usually tend to receive healthcare services through eVisit New, B and New Brunswick in three to four days to a week. So they ask for an appointment, they book an appointment, and they, they are being seen by nurse practitioner within three to four days. An important thing to keep in mind while using this app, especially Maple, is your healthcare provider can always ask for additional information. And uh, if you're going to upload it as soon as possible, that is going to be the best option for your doctor or your nurse practitioner because they will be able to retrieve uh, the appropriate information and additional information for them to make the biggest, the best option for your health and for yourself. And with that's going to be probably the end of our uh, presentation. Thank you very much. I wish you everything the best to have the best health and keep yourself healthy. And thank you for coming to Canada. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul, for this really informative webinar. So I would ask you to, for a short summary, like when upon arrival to Canada, we need to mm -hmm. apply for a Medicare. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Then if we are working, we can ask uh, our employer regarding the benefits and private uh, insurance. Yeah, private health insurance. Exactly. Yes. If there is an emergency, we need to go to emergency room. Exactly. Yes. And if there and is, if it's something not urgent, then we can apply it for help with the uh, e-visit. With the tele, yes. 
yes. or telecare. Or, or telecare. Yes, yeah. exactly. So these are the steps to get the uh, medical help in New Brunswick. Yes, exactly. Okay. And it's applicable for all provinces and probably most of the country. <laughs> okay, thanks again. It is really informative and helpful. And everyone have a good yes. day. Yes, thank you. Thank you. See you. Thanks.